Welcome to Module 8, a module all about budgeting and a very important module, right? A big part of management accounting is about planning for the future, and that's what this module does very well. Uh, something you might not know about me and something a little bit personal is my wife works for an animal shelter. And if you work for an animal shelter, you often have to bring animals home to take care of them until they're ready to be adopted. So I've had every kind of animal in this house that you can imagine. And I learned something about myself and it was something, something I did not expect. I always thought of myself as a big dog person, you know, a lab or a retriever, or, you know, a larger sized dog was what I thought I liked. But ha now having had every kind of dog, every kind of cat, every kind of creature in my house, one animal shines above the rest in Tony Bell's heart. And that animal is the guinea pig. I love guinea pigs. And in fact, we have a lovely guinea pig staying with us, hopefully temporarily, hopefully he gets adopted soon. Uh, but he's in our house now. His name is Elvis Parsley. And if you're good, if you stick around till the end of the video, I might even give you a look at the real Elvis Parsley. But dealing with Elvis, our guinea pig, uh, has made me think about the business of animal food. I And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to just think about how this hay company, uh, Elvis eats and all guinea pigs eat this product called Timothy hay, very common uh, food for a small animal. And I thought, well, what would a Timothy hay business or budget have to think about? So I'm going to share some things I think they might think about. All the numbers will be wacky because of course I'm not a hay expert. I'm not in the hay business, but let's say we're the Timothy Hay Company. All budgets, doesn't matter if you're a hay company or some other company, is going to start with a sales budget. And somebody's going to need to project how many units, how many boxes of hay in this case, we think we can sell. So just to use round numbers, let's assume we're the hay company and we think we can sell 10,000 packs of hay to, you know, animal owners during the month. So that's our budget. We're planning to sell 10,000 units. So our, uh, uh, our budget is to sell 10 thousand units which for us is a box of hay now let's say and and that's a big um you know animal shelter size box of hay the smaller consumer packages of hay you can get are around retail for about 10 bucks a unit let's say we sell it we're the wholesaler we sell it for five dollars and then they turn around and mark it up to the customers for 10 so our sales revenue is going to be five dollars a package let's say again i'm making numbers up here okay well, we can do our first budget with that information. Our sales budget or sales revenue budget, we'll, we'll just call it a sales budget in our class, but our budget of sales revenue, we would say, hey, it's 10,000 units at $5 a unit. We're budgeting to have $50,000 in revenue. And the next budget that will just fall out of here is, when are we gonna get the money? Are we gonna get the money right away? And most companies, they'll get some of the money now and some will be on account and some later and some will be months from now, but they have to plan for that. Like when is the cash flow coming? So they'll do a budget to tell you when they make the sale. They'll also do the budget to tell you when they think they're gonna collect the money. And that's a schedule of expected cash collections. So I'll, I'll call it here a cash collections budget, but in the uh, module, we'll call it a, uh, schedule of expected cash collections, but cash collections budget. When are we gonna see that money? Okay, so we're planning to sell 10,000 units, 10,000 packages of this uh, Timothy hay. Um, well, if I wanna sell 10,000 packages, I gotta make 10,000 packages, don't I? And in fact, if I'm planning to sell 10,000 packages, I'm gonna plan to make more in case I'm a little bit busier than I thought, in case I have some problems, I'm probably gonna plan to make at least 11,000 packages. So let's assume we make a production budget and we go, well, we wanna have a little extra just in case we're going to produce 11,000 packages this month. So I'm just gonna put that in brackets, 11,000 packages or 11,000 units in this case. Okay, so we've already got three budgets, right? From our 
initial number where we said we're going to make 10,000 units, 10,000 packages this month. We've got our revenue budget, our sales budget, our cash collections budget. When am I going to see the money? Our production budget, that's a third budget. What do I need to produce? And let's get ready for a fourth budget, a materials purchases budget. I got to go to hay farms and I got to say, okay, I'm buying 10, I'm going to produce actually 11,000 packages. This is how much my packages weigh. This is how many bales of hay I need to buy from farmers, right? I got to plan that out. Do I have a good farm supply that can supply me with that? If not, do I have to go to another farmer? So I have a materials purchases budget. How many kilograms or bales or pounds or tons of hay do I need to buy to make 10,000 packages that I'm going to sell on to customers? That's an important thing to plan on, right? This is all just the planning that I need to do. And by the way, these are all things we're going to do this chapter, right? We're going to prepare these types of budgets this chapter. What's the next budget I might want to do? Well, if I'm going to make 11,000 packages, I got to have employees, right? I got to figure out, well, how many employees am I going to need? How many hours do they need to work? Do I need to hire somebody new? Do I need to bring in temporary workforce? What do I need to do about labor? So I need to make a direct labor budget. We've just done material and labor. Can you guess what I'm going to say next? Hopefully you guessed overhead. We will budget our overheads likely based on the labor, right? Labor drives overhead. So we're going to prepare, whoops, that's a terrible M, a manufacturing overhead budget, likely based on labor, which is based on the production. We'll also have to budget the rest of our expenses, our selling and admin expenses. So look at that, just from that one data point, and I'm not done, but from that one data point, we've generated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of budgets. And in fact, there's an eighth that will be responsible for this chapter. It's called a cash budget. If you just think about this, right? The cash collections budget tells us when the money's coming in. Well, the materials purchases, that's going to have some money going out. We got to buy material labor. Of course, you got to pay your employees. MOH overhead costs do have financial costs. Yes, that's going to be cash going out and you're selling an administrative expense. A lot of wages in there as well. A lot of uh, monetary costs. So we're saying this is how much money's coming in. This is how much money's going out. The cash budget says, can I float this? Am I going to run out of money? That's an important thing. We'll do two more budgets. We'll do a budgeted income statement and a budgeted balance sheet. So an income statement budget and a balance sheet budget. This chapter, it's a lot. When students look at this, they sometimes get overwhelmed because you work through and each of these budgets has different labels and things like that. And I want to stress to you, it's not about memorizing labels. It's about just getting the process down. So try to understand where the budget is going, what we're trying to do with the budget, but we're going to learn a lot of different budgets. And I bet you my Timothy Hay company that I was showing you earlier, they would do some, if not all of these budgets, if they're a big company, they would do them every month, you know, and they would do them several months at a time. So a very common tool used by business and an important tool used by business. Fundamentally, you want to make sure you're properly staffed, that you're not going to run out of money, that you're not going to run out of materials. These are all things that real companies do, and we're going to learn to do this chapter. But at the start of the video, I said, if you were good, I said, if you would stick around till the end, I would show you the guinea pig that we're taking care of right now so let me zoom in and i'm gonna sneak off i'll grab the guinea pig and then i'll show him to you and we'll say goodbye thanks for watching goodbye the next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.